Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us on this special show today. And we have with us Nikhil and Shanice who are award-winning vloggers and social media influencers with over 1.4 million followers on Instagram and over 3.93 million on YouTube. Nikhil and Shanice specialize in the lifestyle and content space and are known to be one of the first influencer couples on social media. Now, apart from raising a tiny tot, the two of them have been supporting and helping each other flourish in their respective careers. On our special initiative, Future Female Forward, they're both here with us to discuss how balance and parity in equity-led relationships can help in exponential growth in their career. Nikhil, Shanice, thank Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Now, Shanice, let me start with you. First of all, talk to us about how you started on this journey. And apart from just what you've been through and how this journey has been for you, talk to us a little bit about the challenges as well that you faced along the way. Okay, so the thing is, Nikhil was into social media right from the beginning and yeah. I was into the acting industry. And that's when he pushed me, he's like, this industry is budding, it's going to grow quite a lot. So, you know, Shanice, you need to make a YouTube account. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not making one. <laughs> so he actually made an account for me and he was like, you need to post. So I started posting with once a month and then came Instagram. And on Instagram, Nikhil really, his channel boomed a lot on right. YouTube. And then I became his social media manager <laughs> to get him brands. And at right. that point in the beginning, uh, you know, influencers were considered really small um, on social media and people used to be like, I didn't know, I'm not working with you and stuff like that. So I started by working as his manager, getting convincing brands to work with him. So in the beginning, social media was not as big as it was. Right. And to tell someone, they used to ask you, so what do you do? You know, like, what, what, what's your work profile? And we used to be like, we are YouTubers. And it was so weird or awkward saying that because we're like, what are YouTubing? What YouTubing? What do you do exactly? So it used to be really difficult, but I think somehow it feels so great that all the challenges we faced and everything today, it's all worth it. Absolutely. And the whole world recognizes social media influencers as something really big. And today when you ask anyone like what they want to be, they would say they want to be a YouTuber, they want to be an Instagrammer, they want to be a social media influencer. Absolutely. So it makes me feel great that we've reached here today after all the challenges that the beginning influencers faced. Yeah. Absolutely, because everybody today, if you ask them, you, what career do you want to choose? A lot of them will say like influencer yeah. is something that they want to do and want to yeah. be, right? But what was that shift like for you from acting to like becoming an influencer? Are you able to balance the both or is it something that you've put on the back burner and vlogging is something that's your main thing now? Yeah, so I actually put it on a back burner five years ago. I really loved acting a lot, but I was also studying back then. Right. So for me, it was a little difficult. I would skip college to go to to go on sets and shoot a show. But then when I started YouTubing, initially to me it was like, yeah, what am I doing? I'm listening to Nikhil, what am I doing? <laughs> this is not something that I enjoy or comes to me naturally. Like for him, it's so natural. Yeah. And for me, it wasn't. But then initially, as I kept giving my best and trying more harder on that platform, right. I, I realized that this is something I really want to do. Like, you know, I don't have a call time. Like, at any time, <laughs> or something like that. I could go whenever. I could shoot in my house and in my convenience. And I, I started enjoying it so much that I was like, I don't think so, I need to act. If I want to act, I can just make a own skit and put it on YouTube Literally. and show my talent of acting there as well. Yeah. So I, I was like, okay, I'm going to quit and I'm going to take YouTubing into full time. And that's how it is right now. Okay. But now I think um, as a social media influencer, we are uh, offered so many opportunities to act, you know, maybe in an True. advertisement or in many other things. So. I'm balancing both right now, but I think that very soon, because my baby is really small right yeah. now, maybe in a year or two, I want to get back to acting professionally as well. All right. So right yeah. now you're doing a balance of all of it all. So yes. you managed to convince her to go from acting to being your social media manager yes. to then becoming an influencer <laughs> self. So Nikhil, take me through your journey. How did you start on this journey to become an influencer? And what were the challenges that you faced? Uh, were they quite different from hers? What were your challenges along the way? So it's a long story. I'll try to keep it short. Uh, when I started, of course, no one used to take us seriously, as she said. Uh, when someone asked, what are you doing? I say, I'm making a video. For what? For YouTube. What is that? And uh, to be precise, it, uh, she was not just my manager. Even I was her manager. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in order to uh, make you look big, that's why she used to say, I'm, a, I'm his manager. Yeah. Yeah. Because people take uh, people with managers seriously. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, it was a difficult task to convince her to come and join social media because I remember her mother say, uh, telling her, what is he doing? You know, <laughs> spoiling your life. Don't make friends with such person who's forcing you to quit yeah. acting. As jealousy, acting is nice. But when you make a video, you have a different personality. You're acting also in front of... Being natural is yeah. also acting. Absolutely. You know, so when you make a video, you're actually brushing your own skills. When you go and shoot for a, for a TV show or whatever, for a movie, 
you are not being yourself. You are being into a character. But then here you get a chance to be yourself and then people, audience to love you for that. Yeah. That whole shift, I mean, when I look back in time, it's just six or seven years. Yeah. Yeah. But then it felt like almost an eternity. Yeah. Because the whole Act shift till 2017, I mean, the 2015, 16, 17 was the most toughest because you wanted people to take you seriously. Yeah. Uh, um, I like to cut it there that you used to say we were small. We were, we were never small. We were always big. We were, we were, we were people with big thoughts, yeah. right. we were, we, big dreams. Yes. We wanted to convert that dream into reality. So we were not taken seriously back then. But now if you tell anyone, I mean, if someone who has 10,000 followers, they say, I'm social media influencer. Oh, people yeah. take you seriously. With a lot and of they themselves, yeah. they themselves take them seriously when you meet someone with a 100K followers. Uh, Talking about that, it was 2017, I had 500k followers, not a single brand I worked with. Because wow. people people used to not take vlogging seriously. Yeah, and right. I still hold on, hold on. Vlogging is one of the biggest thing ever, hold on. Yeah. Lifestyle, because the more real you are, people love you for that. Right, I they mean, connect with you. Talking about the actors yeah. also, uh, the more we know about their personal life, the more we connect with them on right. big screen. Yeah. So the whole shift was, I would say, uh, uh, it was beautiful. Yeah, right. Yeah. Beautiful. What, what challenging or beautiful? So the biggest challenge you faced was that people were not taking you seriously. Yes. And that's true because back then everybody didn't know exactly what vlogging was or what yes. influencers were. But uh, Shanice uh, and Nikhil, the digital economy has sort of helped in giving access to women, especially in terms of opportunity in so many ways that earlier it wasn't there. So, however, we still see that even as influencers, right, the digital um, gender roles are very strict. You'll see women doing certain things like, you know, either lifestyle or food and you'll see men doing all the things on finance and motivation. Do you think that this has changed? What has your experience been? Do you think that these gender bias roles are now slowly getting removed on social media? Shanice, we can start with you. I think that in the beginning, um, there was a lot of inequality in terms of that women are supposed to do a certain kind of thing right. and men are going to do this. So like men were doing comedy and then the bike riding and different stuff and women were sticking to like beauty or you know being a mom and makeup and all that content but now I think there's so much equality and thank God the audience is very, very supportive. Right. So now women can do whatever they want to do and they know that it's going to work out for them. And same goes for men as well. But I think that women today are taking over completely. It's become a women dominant industry because women can do anything they want to do and it's going to work. People are going to watch. And if you do something different, yeah. like we're not supposed to do something hutke, people are going to be like, wow, what is she doing? <laughs> yeah. You get even more recognition. Yeah. So that's the wonderful thing that's changed today. Absolutely, because I've seen a lot of women who are now like taking their bikes out, going for a ride uh -huh. and they're all influencers. So it's great to see that everyone's breaking these barriers. What do you think? What's your view on it? As a man, was it easier for you in this? Or do you think that, you know, you're seeing all these gender bias roles slowly breaking away? Uh, I would say there was never an equality because uh, men, we were always trained to go out and do something for, a, for, for to make bread and butter for the Correct. house. So we were always forced to do things. If you, what do you want to be? I want to be, I want to be a comedian. I want to be an actor. I want to be, um, I want to be an automobile journalist. Uh, women, you know, nobody asked them. Yeah. yeah. You know, today people are asking them, what do you want to be beside being a mother, beside being a wife? Yeah, that's true. Ten years back, I think nobody used to ask them anything. You know, even if someone wants to be an air hostess, for how long? Yeah. Like for how long you're planning to do this? Yeah. So there was never an inequality. Uh, there were less women trying to break through that. Yeah. yeah. So now. Because it's easier, uh, there are women like, I would say there are women like Madhuri who has made way for Deepika. Yeah. Now, they are, they are, in social media, there are women like uh, uh, Shanez or Prajit Takhuli who has made yeah. way for future, um, I would say, uh, female social influence. media, female uh, social media creators. So now, uh, I would say it's, and, and it's always easier for women to do things, I would say, uh, because there are too many, too many comedians as a, yeah. a, a male comedian. Uh, it was not easy for me to... Uh, make money through that before but it was easier for me to uh, make videos because I was doing something which nobody was right so I mean if you're selling if you're the only one who's selling First mover advantage, mango, yeah. you, <laughs> you'll get your sale right yeah but then now it's easy because because I started it so I get the respect I get that brand and Shannis was always the right partner I need um, not as just a wife as also someone who suggests me about content someone someone who's correct me or whether I'm right or wrong and talking about that it's yes it's easier for women now. Like right. if, you, if you'll ask from a brand, a point of view also, if you have more female audience, you yes, make more money. You make more money. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it is easier to, uh, to convert a female. Because women have the purchasing power. Exactly. No, women purchase purchasing more. Purchasing, not power. 
I would I would not call that power. I would call that that women. It's easy to convince women to buy yeah, this. Yeah, very, very true. I mean, true. a man, if you want to go on a shop, I will take five minutes and I will get that right jeans and right hoodie and shoes and come out. You will like. I just want a T-shirt, but I will end up buying more. But I mean, I think today with even like <clears throat> men coming up with their fashion blogs and you know all of that, I think even men today are experimenting more. There's more things yeah. to sell to them. Like yeah. before, the women would be the ones who had more things to be sold to. So even that's happening now. They were seeing those things change as well. But still, I would say it's limited for men. It's, it'll always be limited for men. Yeah. yeah. For women, there's so many things, different earrings, different tops. We're constantly shoes, thinking about that, correct? <laughs> so now we are getting into that breakthrough that you know. That uh, we would see in ten years, uh, men with different colors of hair, men with uh, different styles, different, different styles. Style, like, We're already seeing it now. You know? We're already yes. seeing it. Yeah. yeah. Makeup. But uh, now that you've spoken about brands, you said up until you had five hundred thousand followers, you actually had not worked with a single brand. Yeah. So, Nikhil, as an influencer, talk to us about the kind of opportunities and partnerships that you've been able to have with various brands, and how do you pick these partnerships? Do you have a method or? Or do you only pick brands that you really believe in? How does it work for you? So for me, I pick brands which goes with my lifestyle. Okay. Like I was someone who was always very uh, particular about grooming, particular about my hairstyle, particular how I look, what I wear. Um, so for me, I wanted that people should understand that I can I can be the right uh, content creator, right. and they can pay. Yeah. And promote. advertise, promote their brands. So I remember starting. Uh, by promoting uh, things for free. So whatever I use, I use a Canon camera, I use this headphones, I use this computer. So I started talking about that particular product because when I used to get calls, we want to make you, uh, we want uh, that two minutes uh, script uh, uh, sketch. I say I'm not a comedian, I'm a vlogger. Uh, how how will you do that? So I told Shanez, you know what? It's it's high time that I need to start doing my own stuff, right. whatever I have because I'm a user. Yeah. So I started promoting my motorcycle, my camera. Everything, whatever Anything. my shoes. You know, I used to go for Linking Road. She used to make videos, yeah. and I also also okay. I got this thousand rupees pair of shoes, and then people started noticing that oh, this they can, can promote. work. They can promote, and I used to lie that you know yeah, I, I got paid. So when you lie, fake it till you make fake. it, right? Yeah, yeah, fake till you make it. Finish. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's what you did. That's so what up, I did. Up until you got all these partnerships yes. that you do have. Yes. Yes. But Chanis, how has your um, experience been? You, how do you choose who you want to collaborate with? Um, is gender equality something that's on top of mind when you choose the kind of brands that you <coughs> sort of collaborate with? Is that something you want to tell your audience or talk to them about it? Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, I feel like in this industry, right, females are offered more paid opportunities as compared to men. Right. Like they are offered as well, but we get a lot more because so many brands, like beauty brands, makeup brands, hair care brands, everything, every, all of them want to work with women. Yeah. Like I said, because women, we always think what our next purchase is going to be. It's <laughs> Always running in our yeah. mind, <laughs> so yeah, we're offered a lot of opportunities. And for me, whenever I, whenever it comes to choosing a brand, I always make sure that I tell them, please send me your products beforehand, at least a month before, so I can try them. I have said no to so many brands who've offered so much money, and sometimes they get offended that why are you saying no. So when you say no to the brand, what is the reason for it? Like, um, what's, what are the things you look at while so you? So I never say that on camera because okay. you know it can be very offensive to fair the brand enough. and it's not fair. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, the reasons of saying no is because I didn't like their product, the quality, or the brand doesn't stand for what they're saying. Okay. And and it didn't suit my skin or my hair. And I know that if it's not suiting me, I cannot recommend it to somebody else. Correct. So those are the pointers that why I say no. I say no. I'm sorry. Like I would have loved to work with you guys, but this just doesn't. work for me and right. i've got like immense backlash for it as well from brands okay but i just think that if you are true to your audience you're going to grow and that's the trust you have to gain with your audience right right so staying true to your audience is key at this point yes. but are you seeing a shift in brands as well are they taking more cognizance towards gender parity and gender equality what has been the experience you've seen so we'll start with you and then you can also give uh, talk to us i think it. that the gender parity has really grown in the industry in these days i feel like now brands are being open to working with everyone equally be it men or women like even for makeup before we used to see only women promoting it yeah. but now there are so many men and it's normal to wear makeup i think it makes you look more groomed more presentable on camera absolutely so makeup brands are okay okay if this this guy who wears makeup we're going to work with him and that's so nice to see i feel it's so welcoming to new creators because there are so many guys who love to wear makeup or love to you know just style themselves very nicely in a fashionable yeah. way and i think brands being supportive of that makes the industry uh, more welcoming to new people and you know when when a uh, when a person sees a creator doing that they feel oh you know i can do it too and it's yeah. normal yeah. so i i just love seeing that yeah so normalizing makeup mm. or different fashion styles yeah. on people for sure so what about you nikhil what has your experience been with this 
Okay, so 10 years back, if you'll ask anyone that, that uh, you'll be getting paid uh, to promote a shampoo or a lip balm, people won't believe you. Or if you'll tell a girl that, you know, after 12 years in 2010, uh, a woman will be re reviewing a car or a motorcycle, you won't believe them. Yeah. Because you're like, I don't want to watch a female review and buy, buy a car, you know. Uh, I don't want to watch a, a male using a shampoo or a lip balm and go and buy yeah. it. We, we just want to believe in that ad, that silky soft ad and buy it. But now it's more natural. So I've seen a shift not only in the female segment, also in the male segment. Right. So males are, of course, promoting. You will see in two, three years, people will be promoting makeup because makeup is, is all right, you know. I mean, heels were invented for men. Yeah. And then females started wearing it. Right. So high heel boots and all that, it'll be more common. It'll be more, uh, so it's, yeah, it has, there's a big shift. I'm seeing people are being more open about it. More yeah, so well. social media is helping breaking those yes. barriers. And yeah. At one point, this was only for a man, and at one point, it was only for a woman, yes. but now it's all equal. Also, talking about the, the wigs. Yeah. Uh, earlier, people ne never believed in wearing wigs. Now, girls are wearing wigs. Boys are wearing wigs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I tell her sometime, you know, I need to wear wigs. Like, you don't need it. I said, just, I don't want to color my hair. I want to wear wigs. So, like, a few years, <laughs> probably. <laughs> you probably need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, I want to get back to, you know, talking about your journey so far, which has been super interesting because, as you said at the beginning as well, that you helped and pushed Nikhil into, like, sort of pursuing his career and sort of getting bigger and become the influencer that he is today. Yes. Obviously, it's also his hard work, but you've it also is, been is. there to support him along the way. So, talk to me about how the two of you support each other and maintain gender equity within your relationship. Okay, so this is something that plays a very big role in our relationship. Like, um, you know, all this while we heard that women go on maternity leave, right? Right. But Nikhil went on a paternity leave and he was there supporting me the whole time during my pregnancy. And I remember, Nikhil, I have this brand that needs me to make a video. How do I do it? He used to be like, don't worry, I'm taking care of the baby. And you go shoot and you post. So this has been always, not only since we got married, but right from before, Nikhil has been the a very supportive friend, then a very supportive boyfriend and a very supportive fiancé as well and he used to always uh, push me and he used to say, Shana, it's not like that only men have to work, even you go ahead and you do it. And sometimes he also has jokes about it, he tells me, you know, I will love to be your manager, that you grow and reach all the heights and I'll sit at home taking care of the kids, <laughs> I don't have a problem. Because women are the future of the world and so I feel so nice that I have a husband who actually supports me and is just not acting on camera. Which is great and also like you said, you have a little <clears throat> child now and you yeah. The roles have always been the mother has to stay at home and take yeah. care of the kid and yeah. the father's going out yeah. and make the bread and butter. What's it like? How do you divide your roles in the home today? Okay. So, <laughs> to begin with, uh, I was the one who used to do hard work. So, I was the one who was an engine, but she was the one who was a steering. She used yeah. to guide me where to go, how to do things. Yeah. So, I, I figured that out that, you know, she's capable of doing so much. She's a smart, she's a smart girl. <laughs> I mean, she's a smart human being. That's why you married me? That's why, yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's my move. Yeah. I made a very smart decision. <laughs> so I remember in... Uh, he secured his future very well. I secured yes, my did. future. So, I, you know, I tell her... And there, there are so many men out there. They just don't say it. I mean, if if their wife will um, will bring money in the house, they're like, you know what? I don't I don't mind cooking. I don't mind staying back. I don't mind taking care of the baby. There are so many men. They just don't say it. Yeah. But for me, I said it. Yeah. I said it. I said, you know what, Shana, as you work... For me, I never stopped making videos because I wanted I wanted to document my life. Right. But I stopped working with brands. I was like, you know what? Because that takes a lot of uh, time, and you have to be in certain uh, mood. You have to be in certain costume, and we were. It was only two of us taking care of the baby. Baby, all right. alone. It was a big roller coaster ride, and you know, I, t I told her, you know what? Uh, you work because you know uh, you have just delivered a baby. You want a shift of mind. Yeah. When you work, you feel nice. You feel yeah. better. You feel because productive. I could go out because it was minus 25, minus 35 where we were. So I could go out, I could grab a coffee, but she couldn't with right. the baby. So I just tell her, you know what, you go, you do stuff. Yeah. I still tell her, go party. We were in <laughs> Goa. There was a big party of all the social media influencers. You know what, I don't, I'm not a party person. I've done enough uh, in my college days. Right. And for <laughs> some reason, I don't get that hit when I go for the party. I don't drink, I don't smoke. Uh, but I tell her, you know what, you are, she's a good social person. For yeah. me, yeah. if I go, I'm, 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 that, I'm, I'm that man who will just uh, hold uh, Pepsi and I will st just stand in one corner. Introvert like and that. I will not, I will not talk yeah. to anybody. Yeah. Even if they know me, even if, hi, how are you? It's good, right? It's too loud. Mm, I understand. She's the one who will go dance, make a move and, you know, uh, talk to everybody, make everyone dance. She's the one. So, right. I'm pretty sure she likes it. 
So tell her you go. So that's how we divide work. We don't we don't consider oh it's it's, it's your baby or it's my you know it's I this 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 yeah, is yeah this, this is just this a mother's job or yeah. a father's job. But so Nikhil, so there is equality yeah. within the relationship. Yeah, a but, lot of but it. I need I need to tell everyone this that it's for a man it's more difficult. Yeah. To take care of a baby because uh, we are not. Uh, Not a natural instinct. Not an. It's not a natural instinct, and Fair not, mentally we're not that strong. So it's a good thing, you know. If if I'm not strong, I want to do it. Yeah. Like how people say, oh, it's a men's world. No, I want to see how it feels. Yeah. So for me, okay, this is a woman's job. I want to see how it feels. So yes. It's very difficult. He's always like that. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, another topic I just wanted to touch upon is, I mean, your journey is great, but also let's talk about trolling on social media, right? There are so many reports that. Always state that the women sort of get more hate than the men do. Yeah. So, what has your experience been on that, and how do you deal with it? So, honestly, I think there has never been a point on social media where I have not faced trolling. Like when I began, I used to be really slim, and people used to say, "What? You don't get food? You know, you're this, you're that." And then when I put on weight later on in my life, people used to say all sorts of bad things. I've got DMs saying the most rude things to me, and most things that I would almost. have a breakdown i've cried so many times reading the trolls and then after that came the time when i was pregnant and uh, we were in canada yeah. uh, you know almost delivering the baby and people have said and mailed me the most worst things any woman would like to hear like i've got mails literally telling me that your baby should die in your tummy and you know you're not a nice person may you die while delivering the baby and stuff like that and you know i used to he used to tell me no touching social media no reading mails no reading dms and so trolls just never stop but after a certain point of time During that phase, I think it made me so strong. I I realized that you know what this is. It can't get worse than this. When someone says that your kid should die, you should die, and stuff like that. So now I just don't take it seriously, and I don't even open my like. I love to reply to my audience. Yeah. Then I just don't take it too seriously. If someone's saying bad things, I tell myself that it's okay. They, I'm doing way better than them in life, and they just yeah. want to bring me down, so they do it. So I just. And at some point, you have to learn to switch off. Otherwise, yeah, these yeah, comments just to. get worse to. and worse. You have to. The, yes. But what has it been like for you? Have has the trolls been have the trolls been kinder to you than they have been to her? No. Uh, but one thing I learned very early that if you're not doing anything wrong on social media or in your life also, and if somebody is commenting about it uh, in real life or social media, you don't need to bother about it. I just tell her one thing yeah, that if people has- are so I I became immune to trolls and hate way early. Yeah. I just tell her one thing. See, if people are talking bad about you and if you're not doing anything wrong, it's a good sign. <laughs> people are taking interest in your life. Right. Let them take interest in your yeah. life. They because uh, someone who likes you might stop watching you, but someone who hates you for something you're doing, he or she will never stop watching yeah. you. So make sure it's a worthwhile journey for them yeah. right. and transform yourself. I always tell her so what you have put on weight it's okay yeah. it's a natural thing if you if it's good thing you're too young and if you put on weight because when you will be in your 30s or 40s you you know how bad it feels so you never put on weight yeah. and then she started losing weight and then she got pregnant and then of course again she put on weight i said like you know what let people say whatever are you a bad person <laughs> no do you do crimes no then you don't need to worry about anything yeah, yeah. Like, like, even the biggest minded. stars in this world they face horrible, horrible. criticism Absolutely. So who we are? We are nobody. You know, you don't yeah. need to feel bad about it. Then she said, "No, but they are not. They, they are not being trolled for the real life." Yeah. I said, "Some of them, they they do get, but you don't need to worry about them because nobody's gonna knock knock at your door and shoot you. Yeah. They're just gonna say bad things about you, and the more you'll ignore because there's somebody who don't comment, who don't talk about it. They are they're watching you, especially the girls. Yeah. They're watching you. They're getting, uh, they're getting motivated, motivated by you. They're getting inspired by you. It's not just girls; for the boys also. I meet so many guys. Absolutely. They say, "I saw you in that phase. Oh my yeah. God! How do you deal with it? It motivated me to do this. It motivated me to do that. It made me so strong." So somewhere down the line, when you learn to deal with the trolls, you're yeah. you're motivating somebody out there who's watching you, right. not just to buy that shampoo or that makeup. Also, to make big, big decisions in their life. Absolutely. So, no matter what you do, I mean, nobody is going to be entirely happy with you, and there are some people that can take inspiration from it. Yes. So, quickly, if you could tell us what do you all do in your downtime? You're constantly creating content. You'll have a baby to take care of. How do you all unwind? Okay, so I, I'll go first. Nikhil loves watching movies, so we're always watching these <laughs> random movies together. And I don't know how come it's been so many years that you know we are together, and the best thing that we both can do is. Take like a cup of chai or coffee in our hands and keep talking for hours and hours and hours together. That's amazing. That's the best thing we do in our downtime. So for me, I, I have a talent. I can watch any movie anytime. <laughs> it doesn't really yes. matter how bad the movie is or how good the movie I is. I don't know how I, I can watch it. 
So as Shani, as Shani has told me like two days back, you know what, Nikhil, there's something about you. One moment you can be the most hardworking yes. person in the world, and the next moment you're the most laziest person in the world. I said, yeah. that's talent. That's the way you unwind. <laughs> that's, that's how you yeah. unwind. Well, Nikhil, Shanis, it's been amazing talking to the two of you and the relationship you all share and the gender equity that you've told everyone and how it's supposed to be. Thank you so much for joining us on Thank this Thank you so much for having us. And we wish you all the best on your journey going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So nice talking to you. <laughs>